Hi, good day everyone. So today we are going to discuss about uh, Article 13 of uh, 1987 Constitution. So we are going to proceed to the first part, which is the social justice and human rights. So you can see that I used a picture that says equality. It is being held by uh, different people with different uh, colors of skin. So meaning everyone is equal, whether no matter what of your ethnicity is. So let us define some of these words. So the first word is social justice. So social justice is an ideology. Historically and in theory, the idea that all people should have equal access to wealth, health, well-being, justice, uh, privileges, and opportunity regardless of their legal, political, economic, or other circumstances. And human rights are moral principles or norms for certain standards of human behavior and are regularly protected in municipal and international law. So social justice uh, basically is just an ideology that promotes equality, equality for all, uh, no matter you're rich or poor, you're Christian, Muslim, you have different ideology, you're still the same, you still have the same opportunity for the uh, social and political aspect. So human rights are are the rights that we are enjoying right now. Uh, we are enjoying freedom, freedom of speech, uh, freedom to own uh, possessions, and freedom for work. And it is being protected by the government and the constitution. So let's proceed to section number one. So this section number one states that the Congress shall give highest priority to the enactment of the measures that protect and enhance the right of all people to human dignity, reduce social, economic, and political inequalities, and remove cultural inequities by equitably diffusing wealth and political power for the common good. To this end, the state shall regulate the acquisition of ownership, use, and disposition of property and its increments. So it uh, tells that the Congress, as the law-making body of the state or of the government, uh, should give its highest priority to enact or to make laws that protect or enhance or promote the human dignity and reduce social, economic, and political inequalities, meaning uh, make everyone, make every Filipino uh, almost equal on the social, economical, and political aspects of of, um, of being a Filipino, of the, of the society, and also uh, promote laws which removes uh, cultural inequities. So no matter what your culture is, uh, the Congress or uh, shall their aim uh, should be making laws to promote equalities of the cultures and diffusing wealth and political power for the common good. So everything that we have given them as a Filipino people, they should make the most of it uh, to promote the common good and not use it uh, on their personal interest. And this last part, um, based on my interpretation, our right to own something like lands, uh, cars, houses has a limit because of this because it say, stay, uh, says that the state shall regulate the acquisition, ownership of uh, properties. So meaning uh, the state uh, still have a control on the limit of the number of properties that we can own. So section number two, the promotion of social justice shall include a commitment to create economic opportunities based on freedom of initiative and self-reliance. So the virtue of social justice promotes equality, quality of opportunities for everyone, uh, for economic, social, and political aspect. 
but it also states here that uh, based on initiative and self-reliance so meaning it is up to the individual itself himself he can only get uh, what he works for example um, an industrious man who works harder uh, than the other man um, can of course uh, gain more money or can have higher economic um, standing compared to one who is lazy not doing his job just uh, playing all day long so it is although we all Filipinos have the same opportunity for the for the economic uh, aspect of our lives it still depends on our on our initiative and self-reliance on how much we can allot our time for work and learning of course okay so let us proceed to labor so first let us define what is labor so labor is any kind of employment uh, maybe a call center agent policeman teacher a driver carpenter farmer so what is labor force so it is the sum of all employed and unemployed uh, looking for work of the population so anyone uh, eligible for work or looking for work and working is if you add all of that so it is the labor force of the population so what is why is labor important so employers demand labor because workers are important part of their production process so workers use tools and equipments to turn inputs into output so without workers employers couldn't produce goods and services and earn profits so labors are basically the wheels of a car or the prime movers so even though you're a capitalist you have the money and the idea how to run a business if you don't have workers you still can't um, mechanize or mobilize your company so it is considered considered good as dead so how does labor affect economic growth so labor can directly affect economic growth and vice versa so the availability of high sk skilled labor can promote high yield and production thus promote economic growth and economic growth opens for a myriad of opportunities like jobs and industrialization so for example an, an industry like uh, the steel industry can help open for like the the ship industry more jobs for the ship industry or jobs for the construction uh, industry jobs for the railway uh, industry because it is being used in those trades <clears throat> so section three the state shall afford full protection to labor local and overseas organized and unorganized and promote full employment and equality of employment opportunities for all so yeah social justice the virtue of social justice everyone has the right to be to be hired to be employed whether you're no matter what your race your political ideology your gender color of your your skin is or we are uh, all equal and even though you are an overseas worker you are still protected by the um, law of the philippines and it shall guarantee the rights of all workers to self-organization collective bargaining and negotiations and peaceful concerted activities including the right to strike in accordance with law they shall be entitled to security of tenure humane conditions of work and a living wage they shall also participate in policy and decision-making processes affecting their rights and benefits as may be provided by law so the workers have the right for self-organization or creating unions 
you also have the right to for collective bargaining uh, or negotiations with a company if they don't like the arrangements like the the wages uh, they have the right to negotiate with the company owner and they also have the right to strike but it must be in accordance with the law and every company should uh, give their employers employees uh, tenure the tenure that they need or the we call this the regularization and of course uh, every em employers should promote humane um, conditions of their workers for example during this pandemic at least they should provide some aid like uh, face masks and alcohols and also they should provide uh, a minimum living wage in order for their workers uh, to sustain their lifestyle or at least um, it is possible to live in the city or even in the rural, rural part of the country so uh, it is also promoted by the government that the workers have the right to participate in policy and decision making of of the uh, of the company that they are working because it is uh, a benefit provided by the law so meaning if there are uh, changes uh, the workers have the right to comment uh, on the changes that they, that they want in the company so the state shall promote the principle of shared responsibility between workers and employers and the preferential use of voluntary modes in settling disputes including conciliation and shall enforce their mutual compliance derived to foster industrial peace so <clears throat> The state promotes like the mutual understanding between the workers and the employees uh, because it can affect the economy of the nation or the state so for example if there are disputes in a big company uh, the tax and it uh, it is forced to close down uh, the tax that they are paying which goes to the income of the state <clears throat> will affect the, the state and their projects so meaning if there is a harmony or mutual understanding between the workers and the company the, the company will uh, will grow uh, and they can have good benefits like a uh, higher salary increase and incentives and also the state shall regulate the relations between workers and employers recognizing the right of labor to its just share in the fruits of production and the right enterprises to reasonable returns on investments and to expansion and growth <clears throat> mm, so the state also um, regulate the relation between workers and employers so the state uh, promotes the like incentives uh, from the company if the company have like high sales that month uh, they should give incentives to their workers so that the workers are are more motivated for their work of course and also um, the companies have the right uh, to ex expand of course so these are the policies made by the government in line with uh, the labor so the first is the presidential decree number 444 made on the first day of May 1974 this was actually signed and made by President uh, Ferdinand Marcos this is the original labor code of the Philippines but this was amended on the second day of March uh, 1989 this is the Republic Act number 6715 uh, it was signed by uh, 
Corazon Aquino. So right now we have the Department of Labor and Employment. As the office may be the government to protect the rights of the labor in the Philippines and to promote the ideas and policies written in the labor code. So DOLE was made after the amend, amended uh, amendment of the uh, labor code uh, on March to 1989. And it is made for the sole purpose of materializing the ideas that is contained in the labor code so that it, uh, it, uh, it can be manifested or it can uh, help the laborers or the workers in the Philippines. Okay, so let us proceed to the agrarian and natural resources reform. And section 4, the state shall by law undertake an agrarian reform program funded on the right of farmers and regular farm workers who are landless to own directly or collectively the lands or they till or in the case of other farm workers to receive a just share of the fruits thereof. To this end, the state shall encourage and undertake the just distribution of all agricultural lands subject to such priorities and reasonable retention limits as the Congress may prescribe, taking into account ecological, developmental, or equity considerations, and subject to the payment of just compensation. In determining retention limits, the state shall respect the right of small landowners. The state shall further provide incentives for voluntary land sharing. So, the direct response of the Aquino administration to this is actually uh, the CARP or the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program, Republic Act Number no. 6657. Uh, it was done on June 10 of 1988. And the contents of the CARP is actually uh, it is a reply uh, to this uh, section of of the article. So, Section 5, the state shall recognize the right of farmers, farm workers, and landowners, as well as cooperatives and other independent farmers organization to participate in planning, organization, and management of the program and shall provide support to agriculture through appropriate technology and research and adequate financial production marketing and other support services. Still, the Section 5 is also under um, the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform. Section 6, the state shall apply the principles of agrarian reform of stewardship whenever applicable in accordance with law in the disposition of utilization of other natural resources, including lands of the public domain under lease or concession suitable to agriculture subject to prior rights, homestead rights of small settlers, and the rights of indigenous communities to their ancestral lands. The state may resettle farmers and farm workers in its own agricultural lands, shall be distributed to them in the manner provided by law. Still, this is uh, under CARP. So, Section 7, the state shall protect the rights of the subsistence fishermen, especially of local communities, to the preferential use of local marine and fishing resources, both inland and offshore. It shall provide support to such fishermen through appropriate technology and research, adequate financial production and marketing assistance, and other services. The state shall also protect, develop, and conserve such resources. The protection shall extend to offshore fishing grounds of subsistence fishermen against foreign intrusion. Fish workers shall receive a just share on their labor in the utilization of marine and fishing resources. So section seven is is um, uh, made to protect the rights of the fishermen, uh, inland or offshore fishermen. I think this is also included in the CARP or one of Aquino's uh, uh, policies because she made like about uh, 10 of those 
it, it is in the last part of this section. So section eight, uh, the state shall provide incentives to landowners to invest the proceeds of the agrarian reform program to promote industrialization, employment creation, and privatization of public sector enterprises. Financial instruments used as payment for their land shall be honored as equity in enterprises of their choice. Section 8. Okay, so here is the list of President Corazon C. Aquino's laws uh, in line with the agrarian reform. So this is the, the list of all her projects. So the first is the Executive num Order number 228, uh, dated July 16, 1987, declared full ownership to qualified farmers, beneficiaries covered by the PD-27. It also determined the value of remaining and valued rice and cornlands. PD-27 provided for the manner of payment by the FBs and mode of compensation to landowners. So this is very technical and uh, you need to at least study law to really dissect one of these. So this is a very complex topic. So here as well. Okay, so let's pre uh, proceed to the urban land reform and housing. Okay, so section number nine, the state shall by law and for the common good undertake in cooperation with the public sector, a continuing program of urban land reform and housing, which will make available at affordable cost, decent housing and basic services to underprivileged and homeless citizens in urban centers and resettlement areas. It shall also promote adequate employment opportunities to such citizens. In the implementation of such program, the state shall respect the rights of small property owners. Okay, section 10, uh, urban or rural poor dwellers shall not be evicted, nor their dwelling demolished except in accordance with law or in a just and humane manner. No resettlement of urban or rural dwellers shall be under undertaken without adequate consultation with them and the communities where they are to be relocated. So meaning uh, the squatters, uh, they can't be easily evicted uh, in their houses well, without a proper, uh, proper uh, just and humane, without in a just and humane manner. So you need to arrange something and it must be in accordance with the law. So here are the policies of the government that was made in order to promote the urban land reform and housing in the Philippines. So first, the Republic Act number 7279, also called as the Urban Development and Housing Act of 1992. So this is an act to provide for a comprehensive and continuing urban development and housing program, establish the mechanism for its implementation and for other purposes. So other is the Republic Act number 11201 or the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. So the Republic Act number 11201 uh, uh, erected or formed the uh, Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. It was made on February 14 of 2019. I think this is under President Duterte. So it's section two states that the state shall verse one to section nine. So this is our reply to the section nine, which is the, this, this is a reply to this. So it states that, uh, to ensure that underprivileged and homeless people have access to adequate, safe, secure, habitable, sustainable, resilient, and affordable home. So even though uh, we are a poor country, uh, Philippines, um, 
the government is still doing its best to provide homes for the homeless. So as we can see uh, in experience, during the Yolanda, uh, the government is actually providing free housing uh, for those who are affected. Although it was delayed by two to three years, at least they received uh, something from it. Okay, so we are going to discuss about the health policies of the government. So section 11, the state shall adapt an integrated and comprehensive approach to health development, which shall endeavor to make essential goods, health, and other social services available to all people at affordable cost. There shall be priority for the needs of the underprivileged, sick, elderly, disabled women and children. The state shall endeavor to provide free medical care to paupers. Section 12, the state shall establish and maintain an effective food and drug regulatory system and undertake appropriate health, manpower, development, and research responsive to countries' health needs and development. Section 13, the state shall establish a special agency for disabled persons and rehabilitation, self-development, and self-reliance for their integration into the mainstream society. So what are the actions of the government regarding the health policy? So first is course uh, the uh, formation of the Department of Health it was formed during the 23rd day of June 1898 was uh, made of course by uh, President Corazon Aquino so and there was actually an existing food and drug administration uh, long before the 1987 Constitution because it was first formed uh, on the 22nd day of June in 1963, but it was amended uh, by the Republic Act number 3720. Uh, it is called the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. And then the Executive number 175 of 1987, uh, in response to the 1987 Constitution, also provides in its Article 13, uh, it is a response to Article 13, Section 12. It states that the state shall establish and maintain an effective food and drug uh, regulatory system and undertake appropriate health, manpower, and development and research responsive to a country's health needs and problems. So, uh, in section 11, uh, we can see here that the state is priori prioritizing the underprivileged uh, sick, the elderly and disabled women and children. But I don't know right now if this is still being followed because I'm, I'm not really very familiar with, in the medical field of our society. Maybe. But all I hear right now is only the rich are can benefit to the real uh, medical aspect, of medical care of um, our country. And it is very sad to hear if you have no money, uh, you are more than to be who are often neglected in the hospital. Okay, so let's proceed to women. Okay, so section 14, the state shall protect working women by providing safe and healthful working conditions, taking into account their maternal functions and such facilities and opportunities that will enhance their welfare and enable them to realize their full potential in the service of the nation. So, as we can see, even in the health uh, section of this article, uh, women are highly prioritized uh, because I think it is uh, the president during that time is a woman. So, uh, the women are highly protected by the law. Um, I think, yeah, I am 
I am for this. I I like this that uh, we are giving uh, more focus on the welfare and the uh, health of our women because they are very important because without women uh, we don't have uh, because women are the mothers of uh, society literally so these are the uh, policies that uh, made by the government uh, to promote uh, uh, the rights of the women so first in the labor code uh, you can find this on the title 3 titled working conditions for special groups of employees uh, chapter 1 employment of women so if you're going to read the articles 130 to 138 you can actually read all uh, all the all the rights of the women uh, regarding uh, employment and also Republic Act 9262 uh, anti-violence against women and their children act of 2014 okay so let's proceed to role and rights of people's organization so to define uh, people's organization or POs unlike NGOs are established by and represent sectors of the population like small farmers artisanal fisher work fisher folk slum dwellers and others uh, POs take a widely variety of forms and exist at various levels. So based on my interpretation, I think uh, the Tricycle Association are considered people's organization also like uh, farmers organization and fishermen's organization. Uh, uh, organization made by uh, people uh, that are actually living in the society uh, minorities and it is uh, protected uh, by the government so section 15 the state shall respect the role of independent people's organization to enable the people to pursue and protect within the democratic framework their legitimate and collective interests and aspirations through peaceful and lawful means so people's organizations are bona fide associations of citizens with demonstrated capacity to promote the public interest and with identifiable leadership membership and structure so if you have the, actually the right to make your own people's organization and it is protected by the state as long as it has these properties um, it should uh, be demonstrated uh, it should promote the public interest with identifiable leadership so there must be a leader and also members and it should have structure so section 16 the right of the people and their organizations to effective and reasonable participation at all levels of social political and economic decision making shall not be abridged so the state shall by law facilitate the establishment of adequate consultation mechanisms Okay, so I think the interpretation of this is uh, the people have the right to make their own uh, organizations uh, in all levels of social, political, or economic, and the state can't actually interfere with this decision making. Uh, they are their own independent body uh, I think that is my interpretation for this okay so human rights okay so what is human rights so they are the basic rights and freedoms that belong to every person in the world from birth until death these basic rights are based on shared values like dignity fairness equality respect and independence these values are defined and protected by law okay so here in the Philippines we enjoy our freedom and democracy freedom to vote uh, freedom to work 
freedom to live, freedom of speech, and uh, why study human rights? So to foster attitudes and of tolerance, respect, solidarity, and responsibility, develop awareness of how human rights can be translated into social and political reality. So yeah, so if you study your rights as a human, uh, you will be educated about everything. So yeah, uh, for your tolerance, uh, how much toler tolerance can you give uh, into someone who are, is violating your human rights? And you can also help others. If you feel that they are being violated, you can tell them that it is a violation of their human rights. And of course, it can be translated into social and political reality, like let's say in the case of LGBT, they are fighting for their uh, rights as a human, as a minority. And okay, so let's proceed to section number 17. So there is thereby uh, created an independent office called the Commission of Human Rights or CHR, and the commission shall be composed of chairman and four members who must be natural-born citizens of the Philippines, and the majority of whom shall be members of the bar, the term of office, and other qualifications and disabilities of the members of the commission shall be provided by law. So this is a very powerful commission. Uh, there must be one chairman and the four members uh, must be uh, natural born Filipinos and at least a uh, member of the bar or lawyers. So number three, until this commission is constituted, the existing presidential committee on human rights shall continue to exercise its present function and powers. Okay, so aside from the CHR, the uh, president actually has a committee on human rights and they can act in place of the CHR if uh, the CHR is not yet formed. Number four, to approve the approved annual appropriations of the commission shall be automatically and regularly released. Okay, so they are rela releasing uh, the approved annual appropriations of the commission. Okay, section number 18, the Commission on Human Rights shall have the following powers and functions. So these are the powers and functions of the CHR. And these are powerful. Number one, investigate on its own, on complaint by any party, all forms of human rights violations involving civil and political rights. Um, the CHR is famous for its uh, investigation against the Duterte administration in terms of its uh, policy against the war on drugs because many, many say that there are uh, innocent people being killed and this falls to uh, extrajudicial killing and they are being investigated by the CHR. And actually, CHR is a very powerful uh, commission, uh, part of the Philippine government. So, number two, adapt its operational guidelines and rules of procedure and cite for contempt for violations thereof in accordance with the rule of court. And all the operation guidelines and rules procedure of CHR must be in accordance to the rule of court. Number three, provide appropriate legal measures for the protection of human rights of all persons within the Philippines as well as Filipinos residing abroad and provide for preventive measures and legal aid services to the underprivileged whose human rights has been violated or need protection. So every Filipino, whether you are uh, here or abroad is under the protection of the CHR and if you know that you are being violated by uh, another person or a um, uh, person uh, working for the government, you can uh, report it to CHR for investigation.
And number four, exercise visitorial powers over jails, prisons, or detention facilities. So members of the CHR has this power to visit uh, jails, prisons, and detention facilities to check the condition of the prisons inside if it is still humane or they are being treated good or badly. And number five, establish a continuing program of research, education, and information to enhance respect for the primacy of human rights. Okay, so there is a non-stop uh, learning here in the CHR. Uh, this part is more on the psychological and philosophical approach uh, for the uh, primacy of the human rights. So they want to uh, they want to know or how to treat a uh, human or uh, in a de deeper sense, uh, not, not just like a uh, human being as we know in the in social environment but also inside uh, in the psyche and number six uh, recommend to the congress effective measures to promote human rights and to provide for compensation to victims of violation of human rights or their families they can actually uh, suggest uh, laws uh, for the congress to make or enact uh, if they think that it is needed uh, for the protection of the people, of course, and their families. And number seven, monitor the Philippine government's compliance with international treaty obligation on human rights. Uh, this is very relevant uh, on the Turkish administration right now. I think we are under he is being uh, under investigated by the uh, international law because he has violated something about the uh, human rights and i think chr is also working with the un and number eight grant immunity for prosecution to any person whose testimony or whose possession of documents or other evidence is necessary to or convenient to determine the truth in any investigation conducted by it or under its authority. So this makes um, a witness or the bearer of any documents or evidence uh, immune for prosecution while the investigation is being held. And number nine, request for the assistance of any department of bureau, office, or agency in the performance of its functions. So the CHR is actually very powerful because they can uh, request for assistance of any department, uh, bureau, office in the, uh, of the government. And number 10, appoint its officers and employees in accordance with law. So everything should be in line with the law when they are appointing new officers and employees. And number 11, perform such other duties and functions as may be provided by law. Okay, so everything uh, that they do, uh, their duties and functions, uh, is being provided by law. And section 19, the Congress may provide for other cases of violations of human rights that should fall within the authority of the Commission taking into account its recommendations okay so the Congress uh, may suggest uh, other cases of violation